This clip is recorded on Switcher Studio. This is not cinematic mode on the latest iPhones. This is a mirrorless camera. Switcher Studio has always been about using iPhones and iPads as camera sources, and it's what makes Switcher Studio so great to use. It was my main setup for about two years before I moved to a mirrorless, Atom, and Ecamm setup. It took me a while and a lot of investment to recreate everything that Switcher Studio offers. ISO recording, remote PTZ, remote guest. Before this, to use DSLR or mirrorless cameras on Switcher Studio, you have to connect it as a webcam to a computer and then send the video feed using SwitcherCast. Audio will be out of sync and it's just very clunky to have a computer as a giant capture card. It was frustrating because Switcher Studio is such a fantastic and user-friendly live stream app compared to others out there. But we were limited by the optics and focal length of iPhone cameras. Guess what? The game has changed. With the latest update, they've utilized CMOS SDK by Exun to bring in HDMI sources directly into Switcher Studio. That's right, any camera with a HDMI output, any game console, any computer can now be brought into Switcher Studio. There is a bit of investment involved. You'll need a CMO device for each HDMI device you wish to bring in. Is it worth it? We'll see. I have with me a beta version of Switcher Studio which I'm using to film this video on. I'm going to compare the capabilities of this setup compared to using iPhones to see if it's as good as it sounds. Visually, we'll know it's better. How about the smoothness of the video feed? Does it still do ISO recording? What's the audio situation like? I also want to find out how the system reacts at sudden disconnections at various parts of the setup. Here's how to set it up. Connect the HDMI output from the camera to the Exun CMO. Insert a Sony MPF battery into CMO. Connect the CMO to the iPhone using the bundled cable. And very important, it must be the bundled cable. Switcher Studio automatically recognizes that there's a CMO device connected to it. And then you can connect to the phone on your Switcher iPad. Your camera settings should also mirror that of your stream settings. So you can't record in 4K due to CMOS limitation. And over here, if your stream settings is set to Full HD 30, your camera settings should also set to Full HD 30. Here's an iPhone 11 Pro on the left, and my Nikon Z6 on the right using CMOS integration. Now that we have the flexibility of using proper cameras and lenses, this means I can zoom in way closer to my subject than an iPhone. This also means that as physical events return, the camera can be placed further away from the stage, behind the live audiences. Currently, there's a slight lag from the camera to CMO, so by the time it reaches the iPad, you are about 5 frames off compared to the other iPhones. So while editing this, I realized that actually it doesn't make sense that you don't have a solution for this issue right out of the box. Uh, I checked in with Nick and he actually directed me over to a toggle on the iPhone that is connected to CMO. So on the left is the iPhone, on the right is my Nikon camera. And on the CMO iPhone, you'll be able to access the CMO settings menu on the top left hand corner. And from there, you can adjust the latency. So for example, right now, I currently still have a lag between the iPhone and the Nikon camera. But if I adjust the latency all the way to the maximum of 200. So you can see that for most part, the latency issue has been resolved, the Nikon can match the iPhones. Audio side, Switcher Studio only records video from the cameras. So unfortunately, your director mode recording on the iPhone will not include camera audio. Since the video feed passes through an iPhone, we still get most of the network information such as latency, the storage on the phone, and the battery level. The battery level refers to the iPhone's battery, so take note that CMO and the camera's batteries still have to be monitored separately. How long CMO runs depends on the size of your MPF batteries, so based off their website, Apparently, CMO can run for 8 hours off a F970 battery. For cameras, you can run them off dummy batteries for longer streams. Let's test how this setup reacts to sudden disconnections. When you disconnect the HDMI cable, the HDMI feed will still remain on Switcher Studio on the iPad. If you unplug the USB cable, however, Switcher Studio will disconnect that CMO source. This is where I have to deliver some bad news. How do you charge the iPhone? You would think that there's pass-through charging from the MPF battery, but nope. How about using Lightning USB dongle? Nope. 
Here's the thing, CMO only works with its own cables, the USB-C to Lightning and USB-C to USB-C for anyone using iPads as transmitters. The only way you can power your phone while using CMO is perhaps using one of those MagSafe power banks. Still, you can't discount the benefits of working with bigger sensors and lenses. For solo live streamers, while this presents an excellent way to augment your setup with bigger cameras, it also means that you have to get camera operators now since you cannot adjust the exposure and white balance on the fly. Mixing iPhones and cameras in your setup also means that your shots will look different switching between them as the tonality will differ. Still, with this new update, it might just make me return to Citrus Studio for more gigs? Maybe. I've listed the equipment I use below for this video and do subscribe to our channel as we are planning to upload more Switcher Studio focused videos to help you level up your live streams. See you!